Hello dear friends and welcome to Multilingual Family. Today I want to give you five strategies on how to support your child in more than one language. If you grew up bilingual or you feel very comfortable in more than one language, you might be having a hard time figuring out which language to use with your child. Maybe you already chose one, but you still feel that you would like to use the other one as well. Now, one of the biggest mistakes I see parents doing is not having a strategy at all. Switching from one language to the other without thinking about it, sometimes even during the same sentence, is really bad. That's poison for your child's development, language development. It's not good. So. What can you do? What are scientifically proven strategies that allow you to use more than one language without messing things up? So I'll start talking about these five strategies in a second, but before let me be clear on this point again. What I'm about to tell you is only advisable if you are proficient in more than one language. If you do not feel confident in the second or third language, I strongly recommend you not to use it with your child. There are other ways how you can make sure that your child becomes bilingual or multilingual using help from other sources, but do not use another language if you don't feel 100% confident. That's very important. The method that I'm going to focus on today is the so-called OSOL, One Situation, One Language. If you do not know what I'm talking about when I say methods, don't worry, go to my blog and look for how to choose a method. On that video, I go into depth um, and I explain what are the most common methods that families use for their multilingual children. So let's get started. When raising multilingual children, you want to make sure that your child knows exactly when each language is used. That is so important. That's the most important thing of all of these methods. That's why the OPOL method works very well, because it means one person, one language. At home and whoever speaks to your child has one language that is used with a child and they stick to that. This is a method that works out very well and has been proven a million times. Then you have the, this other method that is also very effective and this is the MLAH, Minority Language at Home. This one means basically that you have a family language at home and as soon as you step out of your home uh, you speak the country language, the majority language with your child and with everybody else. For, again, in this, using this strategy helps your child know exactly when to use each language. But today I'm going to focus on this, SOL. This is one situation, one language. Now I'll give you five ideas on uh, how you can use one situation and one language. The first one is traveling. You can, for instance, say every time we go on vacations to another country, we switch to the L2, to the other language, as soon as we step into a plane or a train. And we speak that language during the whole vacation until we come back home. That could be one way to do it. Another way is the method my, minority language at home, which says that you speak one language at home. And as soon as you step out, you speak another language outside. Another way to do it is you choose a room or a corner in your house where you practice the other language. For instance, 
a playing corner where you read, sing, play in that other language. As soon as you step out of that place, you switch back to the L1. Then another method that is used in the kindergartens in Switzerland is the one day, one language approach, which means that um, you select one day to speak the other language. In Switzerland, in the German part of Switzerland, some kindergartens speak, for instance, four days a week Swiss German, and they pick one day of the week to speak High German. They might paste some um, posters on the, on the walls to remind everybody that that is the German, the High German day. All of these four strategies work out well if you are a disciplined person. If you are a disciplined person, this is for sure going to, to hit off. But um, I personally believe that these four strategies are a bit hard because as a as a grown-up, you, you need to think about it. You need to constantly be aware that you are now speaking the other language. And you, be, you have to be very consistent. It only works if you're consistent. If you forget about it and you fall back to the other language, then you can stop altogether because it's not going to work out. So remember, that is a little bit the tough part of, of, of those four strategies that I just told you about. Now I'm going to tell you which one I use with my daughter. I use the strategy that I like to call one language, one accessory. Because I grew up bilingual, I feel confident enough to speak Swiss German to her. Um, I normally speak Spanish to her, but to me it's important that she can speak fluently Swiss German before she goes to kindergarten. So one of my goals and one of my desires is to support her also a few hours at home um, so that she yeah, can get better at Swiss German fast. So I chose an accessory for her, for me, better. It's it's not for her. I, I'm the one that wears it. I chose a hat. But you could choose sunglasses or whatever else you feel comfortable with. Bear in mind that it should be something that you don't feel embarrassed using also outside home. Um, so how does this work? Every time I put on the hat um, I switch to the other language and I play, I read, I do everything in the other language um, as long as I'm wearing the hat. As soon as I take the hat off I go back to speaking Spanish with her. This is the hat I chose for my daughter and she's two years old now uh, up until she was two, I only spoke Spanish with her. But now that she's talking in Spanish and she understands basically a lot of what I say. And she speaks Danish with the dad. And she can switch depending on the person she's talking to. I thought it was, it is right now a good time to start supporting her in Swiss German. She understands Swiss German, but she doesn't speak that much yet. So what I basically do, or what I did a few weeks ago is, uh, I took the hat and I say, Laia, mira, mira, do, 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 and then zip, I put the hat on. And as soon as I put the hat on, bam, I switch to Swiss German. I start talking to her in Swiss German. I start playing to her in Swiss German, everything. The, the amazing thing is that even though she's little, still pretty little, two years old, I, I really didn't expect her to realize what's happening, but she, total, she totally got it. Because now every time I put the hat on, 
not only does she listen to what I'm saying and is having, seems to be having fun, but she also switches. She stops speaking to me in Spanish and starts using the few words and the few sentences that she already knows in Swiss German. And I hear her talking things that I still don't understand. It's like some baby blah blah, but it doesn't matter. The point is that she already realizes that it is a special situation every time I put the hat on. And then I must say I'm happy with my work because that is, that is exactly what, what I wanted to achieve. I, want, I wanted her to realize that this is a different situation than normally and that's why we use a different language. So there again, I've given you some ideas of how you can support your child if you are proficient in more than one language and you, you wish to use those languages with your child. So try it out and tell me how it goes. Give me a like, a comment, and I'll see you next time. Ciao.